Mechanical flaws can lead to catastrophic things, like a car accident, a faulty pipeline at a workplace that falls that falls the ceiling down, or a train wreck caused by a faulty axle. That's kind of what happened in Wellington in May. And this is it, the story of the Wellington train derailment. On May 28, 2019, a CSX eastbound manifest train was heading from Columbus, Ohio, over to Toledo Branch, which would then be taken over to the Stanley Yard for further switching. This train had a lot of cars, at least about 111, 89 loaded, and 29 empty. It was powered by three locomotives. The first one being ET44H 3428, then followed by GP40-3 6539, and finally an X Conrail SD50-3 8523. Like I said, this train was carrying 111 freight cars, 89 loaded, and 27 empty. I screwed up in the beginning though, but I'm not gonna cut that out because I'm too lazy, but still. 111 freight cars. That is very long, in my opinion. Most of the empty and loaded freight cars consist of the boxcars. A lot of these boxcars were headed over to the little branch to be switched over to another train. But, you know, it was carrying a lot. Nonetheless though, despite the train mostly consisting of boxcars, there are still a lot of disordered freight in there, like grain cars and tank cars. At approximately 5.29am, the eastbound manifest train left Columbus Yard, paying over for the Stanley Yard in Toledo. The train was looking pretty normal, but this would not come to be when the train would reach Wellington. While the conductor was doing checks on 6539, he noticed that there were little sparks flying. He didn't take much notice though, and the train continued to go on. But the wheel slip just kept getting worse, worse, and worse, and worse. So bad that the engineer had to place the train into emergency braking to stop for an emergency. But by that time, it was already too late. The train derails going 65 miles per hour causing the boxcars to immediately be destroyed. The engines separated from the train and were dragged a couple miles away, but it continued going. About until 30 seconds later, everything comes to a complete stop. The aftermath is a horrifying sight. 3428 did not derail, but 8523 and 65 39 derailed, with 6539 breaking its axle, and 8523 leaking some fuel on the bottom of it. The freight car suffered severe damage in the incident as well. Thankfully, no one was hurt or killed, though there was a fire going on afterwards, mainly from the, from the boxcar carrying onions. The cleanup was finished at around noontime that day. The engines were taken away to the locomotive shop to be repaired or to be retired. I'll get to that later, but still, what even caused this disaster? The FRA so far has not found a full conclusion to the accident in Wellington. This is due to the fact that the accident occurred in May, and it's not been that long since it occurred. So they still haven't figured it out, but they're still trying to anyway. I've loved trains for a long time now. Really, I have. Train wrecks really interest me. So, I decided to do a little investigation on the accident myself. I don't have that many theories on why the accident occurred, but I at least have two theories. And they are, it's either a broken axle inside the third unit, the second unit of 6539, or a fuel leakage in the first unit of 3428. I don't really think that the fuel leakage theory won't make any sense because 3428 is a really good train because it's an 8044H that was recently built. Considering the fact that the GP40-3 6539 was really old, built in the 70s, could experience a broken axle at any time. So the axle theory makes more sense. 3428 was not damaged in the accident and continues to run to this day on Miami Branch in Florida, along with some other engines that are involved in accidents as well. Despite some minor damage to 8523, it was luckily repaired in Toledo and currently runs to this day. It is currently being upgraded to SD40-3 standards. 
Despite minor damage to 6539, CSX claimed that it was deemed a total loss and would not be returned to service. It was officially retired in June. It is currently awaiting its fate in Wellington right now as it just sits on the siding waiting to be either scrapped or sent to storage. This accident could imply major changes to maintenance and other axle repair units. But whoever was involved in this accident will never forget what happened that morning in Wellington. It's been five months since the accident first occurred, but hopefully we don't see an accident like this ever again. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,